What's up, O-Doers, and welcome back. In case you haven't noticed, Stealthy Wood has been having some great sales quarters, and we wanted to celebrate with a shareholders fundraising event. This is where all of our incredible Stealthy Wooders can gather for a fun weekend of music. Everything's stealthy, and just give back to our community. If you ever plan something like a conference or comic convention, then you know managing an event like this can get a little hectic. Luckily, Odoo events make it easy to plan, customize, and facilitate events. So today we're gonna to go over the very basics of the app and walking you through creating your first event. Let's hop into our Stealthywood database and get this party started. All good parties start with solid prep time beforehand. So let's double check our settings to see all the different ways we can plan and host an event. We're gonna click into the settings application followed by the events section on the left. And here we wanna make sure schedule and tracks is enabled. Tracks is an umbrella term for cool things happening inside of an event like talks, lectures, demos, presentations, and more. Once we enabled schedule and tracks, it opens up possibilities for us to do things like live broadcasts, like streaming on YouTube, as well as sending out post surveys once the track is done. Next down below, we have our registration section, which lets us configure all the different ways attendees can sign up. For our Stealthy Wood Party, we have online ticketing enabled, which lets us sell tickets, and then we also have tickets with sales enabled, which will record our ticket sales in the sales app. As you might have noticed, there are quite a few other settings that can help you customize any snazzy event, but we just went over the ones that pertain to today's event, and if you want to learn more about the events app, feel free to check out our other tutorials and documentation links below. Now that we have what we need though, just feel free to click save at the top, and then we'll move on to our events app dashboard. By default, the dashboard shows all the events in our database here in the Kanban view, which is also complete with the various stages each event is currently in. We can also quickly add a new event in any other stage by clicking the plus icon in that stage, which will open up a simple form for the event name as well as date. However, for today, we want to do a little bit more configuration than that. So we're just going to click away and click new in the upper left hand corner. And when we do that, this opens up a full event form. We're going to name our shareholders retreat Stealthy Woodstock. And we're hoping for a bright summer weekend. So we're gonna start this event on the last weekend of June, which will start on Friday. And then it's gonna end on Sunday, June 29th. And then when that looks good, you just click apply. We also wanna make sure this is the current time zone we're working in. So we're gonna change this from Europe Brussels to US Pacific. Awesome. Now in the language field, I could assign different languages to translate event communications. However, keep in mind before you select another language here, you need to enable them in the general settings first. Maybe in the future, we can hold a stealthy whole stock in Germany, which would be held in German, but for now we're gonna keep this blank. So following that, we have our template field, which we can choose a template that autofills elements like email communications, registration tickets, and contact forms. This is so we don't have to create them from scratch for every event. So here we're gonna select our charity fundraiser template. And as you can see, this autofills a lot of information such as ticketing options, as well as registration options. Now under templates here, we can add tags to make it easier to search for the event. Um, we're gonna add some things to our Stealthy Woodstock event like culture, music, and conference. Next, I can also specify who the organizer is. We're gonna update this to our Stealthy Wood California office. We're also gonna keep Mitchell Admin as the responsible user, which means he'll be the main point of contact for all communications related to this event. Down below that, we have our venue field here, and we're gonna update this to our Stealthy Wood office again in California. And when we select the venue, since this address is already in our database, it pre-populates. And look at that, it looks like we're gonna have a party in Brisbane. So this is going to be a pretty big event, so we wanna make sure we're keeping everything within fire code. So here in the limit registrations, I'm just gonna tick this box and limit this to 500 attendees. Now, for event badges, we're gonna keep this to the default A6, which is a typical badge name you see in event lanyards. These will be just simple name badges for attendees, so we won't upload anything for the badges background area right here. 
So now that we've configured the general event details, let's set up our stealthy Woodstock tickets. We scroll down to the ticket tab here. Our event template has already done a lot for us by giving us two different ticketing options. As you may have noticed, the prize field has also been given a suggesting price, which seems good for our standard ticket. So we're gonna keep this one as is. To set up our sales window, I'm just gonna click the sales start right here. We can start this a week from today. And the sales end is going to be the Friday the event starts on. Now for the next tier here in event registration VIP, this is for our extra special Stealthy Wooders. This tier gets them some additional perks and merch at Stealthy Woodstock, and this is reflective in the premium pricing. So this has the same registration window, so we're gonna change this here to start the sales a week from today, and the sales going to end, once again, the Friday the event starts on. And those are our tickets. If we click into the communication tab here, we'll find the various messages that will be sent to attendees leading up to the event. We can also edit and add these whenever we'd like, but we'll focus on that in another video. Let's move on to the questions tab. And this is where we can create questions to ask our attendees as they register for the event. As you can see, we have a few mandatory questions already. But let's go ahead and create another one to make sure nobody goes into anaphylactic shock at our event. So we're going to add a diet restrictions questions, and we'll start by clicking add a line, which opens up a question form. And we're just going to type this question that we see here. Do you And next, we're going to tick the mandatory checkbox, and we're just going to put the question type as a text input. And this is so attendees can just type their answer in. And finally, we're just going to click Save and Close. So this looks good, so let's scroll back up and head up to our Smart button, and we're going to click the Go to Website Smart button just to see what our users see when they look at the front end of our event. So you might have noticed Odoo used some AI magic here to fill in information about our event, but it does require some tweaking, which I can do under the Edit button here on our website feature. For now, though, we're going to keep this unpublished and hand it off to our event team for them to finalize. And there you have it, Odooers. Your first event is up and ready to party. Today, we briefly went over all the cool ways to configure Odoo events, as well as how to create and set up your very first event. Stay tuned for more information on customizing and tracking your events, but until then, I'll see you later.